Another example of exponential growth and decay comes from Newton's law of cooling. An interesting example of the use of Newton's law of cooling comes from estimating time of death using temperature. So the temperature of a corpse approximately obeys Newton's law of cooling, which states that the rate of change in temperature in the body is proportional to the difference in temperature from room temperature. If a body is found in a temperature-controlled room set at 72 degrees Fahrenheit, and the temperature measures at 9 o'clock p.m., measures 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and is decreasing at an instantaneous rate of 2 degrees Fahrenheit per hour, estimate a time of death. We start by identifying our variables. We're interested in the temperature. of the body, and its temperature is a function of time. So let's list time, time of day. Now if I measure temperature with the variable t and time with lowercase t, I still need to identify how I measure time, and so I'm going to measure time as though 9 o'clock p.m. corresponds to t equals 9. So t equals 0 would be noon. And negative times would be in the morning, unless it was more than negative 12. But uh, that's how I'll measure time. We have our variables. Secondly, we need to identify a model. Let's look at our information and see if we can identify what model we should use. So key, we're looking at Newton's law of cooling. The rate of change in temperature is proportional to the difference in temperature from the room temperature. Let's see if we can translate what that means. Rate of change is a derivative. We're saying that the derivative of the temperature is proportional, so we're equal to some constant, times, and then it says the difference in temperature from room temperature. This means we're taking the difference of T, the temperature of our body, and we're subtracting the temperature of the room, which is 72 degrees. Now this is this is different than our exponential growth model because what we're seeing is that I am not so let's, let's just simplify this this is not simple exponential model because that would be dt dt the derivative of the temperature equals kt and we have something that looks like d rate of change of temperature is kt minus 72k. So we need to rethink this. The key idea to make this problem manageable is to, re is to recognize it's not really the temperature that I'm looking at, but it's the temperature difference that I want to look at. So we really want to look at the temperature difference. Let's call D the difference T minus 72. This is the difference in temperature. Now by calculus rules, the derivative of the difference is the derivative the formula t minus 72 and the derivative of t is simply dt dt which we can replace by k times the difference in temperature and so we get k times d. What this means is our model 
turns into saying that the rate of change of the difference in temperature is proportional to the difference in temperature. And this means that my difference in temperature has an exponential growth. And this is actually the model that we'll use to solve our problem. We're given information that at 9 o'clock p.m. the temperature is 80 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm decreasing at a rate of 2 degrees Fahrenheit per hour. I get to use that information to say that when the time equals 9, so that's 9 o'clock p.m., my temperature was 80 degrees. And that's enough to tell me that the difference in temperature, which is T minus 72, is 8 degrees. We also know that the rate of change of temperature is negative 2 because my temperature is decreasing at a rate of 2 degrees per hour. Now from our earlier work we know that the rate of change of my temperature and the rate of change of my difference are the same which allows me to know that the rate of change for my difference at that instant was also negative 2. Now because of our model that the rate of change is equal to the constant k, and it's the same k that's in the model, so I meant to say the rate of change of the difference is equal to constant times the difference itself, and the k is the same as in the model, this is enough to tell me that negative 2 equals k times 8, where negative 2 is the rate of change of the difference, and 8 is the value of the difference itself. So using the model equation, we actually learn that k is negative one-fourth. My model for my difference is a e to the negative one-fourth t, or negative t, divided by four. Now, in order to find the last co coefficient, I'm going to take advantage of one more piece of information that I've already stated, namely that d at time 9 is equal to 8 degrees. So I can plug that in. 8 equals a e to the negative t, which is negative 9, over 4. This allows me to solve for a. I'll divide by e to the negative 9 over 4, or I'll multiply to find that a is equal to 8 e to the positive 9 over 4. My temperature difference as a function of time is 8 e to the 9 over 4, that's my a, times e to the negative t over 4, that's e to the kt. If I combine my coefficients using the rules of exponents, I can actually rewrite this as 8 times e to the 9 minus t all over 4. Finally, what's the question? We want to know when did the individual die?
Well, that should have been when the difference in my temperature is equal to a living temperature, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 72 degrees, that would have been a temperature of 26.6. So we use our model, 8 times E to the quantity 9 minus T over 4 equals 26.6. And this is the equation that I want to solve. So we've cleared a little space so we can finish the problem. We take our formula, 8 times e to the 9 minus t over 4. We set it equal to 26.6. We're going to solve for t. First, I need to divide both sides by 8, which leaves e to the quantity 9 minus t over 4 equals 26.6 over 8. I'll now take a logarithm to undo the exponential. I get 9 minus t over 4 equals the logarithm of 26.6 over 8. I'll then multiply by 4. 9 minus t equals 4 times the natural logarithm of 26.6 over 8. I need to solve for t. So if I add t to the other side and subtract this back, I get t equals 9 minus 4 times the natural logarithm 26.6 over 8. We plug that into our calculator. I get 4.19. So this is how many hours after noon. 4.19 is about 4, approximately, 4 and 1 fifth hours afternoon. A uh, fifth of an hour is 12 minutes, so we were between 4.10 and 4.15. So we would estimate a time of death around 4.10 to 4.15 in the afternoon. And that's how Newton's Law of Cooling allows us to solve for something like time of death.